Thanks, Michael. Hey, Greg. Hey, Brian. Um, just now that we're in the final window, curious if you have a verdict on the, the game two puzzle. Um, is it a statistical accident or, or have you guys found a pattern either with preparation, psychology, rotation, recovery uh, that you think you can address tomorrow? Thanks. Um, it's a good question. You know, we've given it some thought. Um, and, you know, we, we haven't come up with much, to be honest. Um, three of the games have been away from home, which we know is always harder to get points, right, statistically. So that, there's one side of it there. Um, you know, the, the first window, I think we were just in flux as a group, right? The, the, um, you know, the, the Canada game was a good example of that. So, you know, that one we didn't get the maximum three points. But overall, I, I'm not sure, Brian, it's a big enough sample size to really okay. make a judgment on it. And, and what we're doing is, is acknowledging it. I think it's a challenge for the group, right? This is our last second game of, of the um, qualifying round, so it's a great challenge, guys. We haven't won a game in the second, in the, the second game of, of the qualifying round. This is a great challenge for us. Let's, let's win this game. This is the last window, last opportunity to do that, and, and let's try to get a win. So that, I think that's the message, more using it as a challenge for the group because, you know, it's, it's when you're looking at it, you're not happy with it, for sure. Okay. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Next will be Paul Kenny from Soccer America. Thank you, Michael. Um, Greg, you really took the job, and since then I know you've had an opportunity to pick the brains of, you know, former U.S. national team coaches. Um, looking back on it, was there any advice someone gave you that proved to be really valuable and also – was there something someone said at the time you didn't think much of, but now in retrospect, it proved to be really true? No, I mean, listen, I, I talked to Jurgen at length before the Mexico game, um, or, or in you know about what it's like to play in Mexico, what it's like to coach the team there, what the fitness concerns were. You know, those were great conversations. You know, Bruce has been really was really helpful, and I mentioned this before. I think you know I've said I've been on record saying this is that. The biggest thing that I've learned, and Bruce hammered this home with me, is you're never going to have the te your 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 best team. You know, it's always going to be, you're always going to be missing players. And as soon as I came to terms with that, you know, we're just we're much more peaceful about it. We're much more intentional about the next man up mentality because that's literally what it is. Uh, you know, Shaq Shaq Moore's in camp now. If you think about our right back depth chart, you know, three of our right backs are out for the next game. And that's, that's the epitome of next man up mentality. And that's just what it is. So I think that was really, um, you know, th that's something that really sunk in with me as I had this job. Thanks. Thank Good you. Luck. Next would be Ron Blum from the Associated Press. Hey, Greg. Hey, Ron. Uh, you had said uh, when Serginho got hurt, you had mentioned four players you were looking at uh, there and you brought in Bella. And it looked like it came down to the decision now to bring in either Shaq or Scally. How did you come up with making the decision? And given what you have, is Shaq a likely starter tomorrow? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, that's something we're, we're going through right now, Ron. Um, we're taking a look at. But when we decided... Um, when we decided to bring Bello in, you know, we, we felt pretty well covered it at um, right back. We were looking potentially at someone who could be right back or left back, and that's where Joe Scally's done it before, um, Shaq less so. Um, but then we decided to go for a pure left back. Now, with, um, with, in the meantime, you know, the, the funny thing is, is when we, before we named that roster, Shaq hadn't been playing at all. And, and basically, the weekend after we named the roster, he started in that game 90 minutes, and I thought played really well, really well as a, as a right back. He, you know, he, he maybe had an assist that day or was, was really good getting forward. He ended up starting the game, you know, second division. So now we're, we're stuck with, okay, do we still bring him in um, as depth? But then second division plays in the international window. I don't know if you're aware of that. So we didn't want to take him away, hurt his chance from playing for the rest of the year at the club when we had enough cover. So we didn't, we didn't bring him at that time, and he had a Monday game, actually, in, in last Monday, and, and played really well again. So then it became clear to us, you know, 1v1 defending, really aggressive going forward, putting great crosses, um, you know, and, and he's a guy that, you know, played in a Gold Cup final for us. So we're, we're very comfortable with him, and we decided to go with the experience um, over Joe Scally in this case. Thank you. Yep.
Jack, also a member of the Gold Cup Best 11 from that tournament. Yeah, and sorry for that long answer, Ron. I know I was rambling on. <laughs> sometimes we get long questions, sometimes we get thoughtful answers. Next will be Doug McIntyre from Fox. Thanks, Michael. We like long answers, Greg. You don't ever have to apologize for that. Um, curious with your, your emotions going in tomorrow. I'm sure you're really excited uh, about the opportunity in front of you. How nervous are you, if at all? I mean, I know you get to pick the lineups and make the subs, but once the whistle blows, it's kind of out of your control a little bit, just like it is for, for all the fans that are going to be watching tomorrow. So what, what, what are your emotions going into tomorrow? And good luck to you, Greg. Thanks. You know, I, I preached um, I preached to the team about just one game at a time, um, sticking to the process, doing doing the small things, doing the process oriented things, and the results will come. And and that's that's how I'm looking at this as a coach. Also, we're just we're doing our um, our final preparations like we always do, and that's what it is. You know, it's it's honestly not more than that. I, I know it's a big game. But it's still a soccer game. It's still 90 minutes long. It's still 11 v 11 on a field that that we've been at before and we're comfortable with at our in our um, in our United States. So for us, it's it's really just doing what we do and sticking to the process. Thanks. Yep. Next will be Kevin Baxter from the LA Times. Hey, Greg. Thanks again for your time. Um, kind of following up on Doug's question and, and your and your question about the the second game. In the window, it, it does seem kind of weird that you have Panama in the penultimate game. You know, you're you're right there, close to qualifying. They're, they're just, and then your final game is on the road. It, there just seems like a lot of weird similarities to last time, and 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 we know what happened last time. How do you keep your guys focused on running through the finish line and not easing up this close to the end? Thanks and good luck tomorrow. Again, staying in the moment, staying present. You know, it's really important not to get ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, we can only control um, what we can control, right? And um, that's what we're focused on. It's, it's, I mean, it's literally doing what we've been doing and, um, and preparing and doing the necessary things to, um, to play well. And, and that's it, really. Um, you know, it's, I, I know there are similarities to last time, but you know we're we're looking forward. I don't think this is a group that looks back. We acknowledge what happened in the past. It's part of who we are as, as U.S. men's national team players and program. We have, we acknowledge that, but we have to forge our own path. And um, and tomorrow's a good time to do it. We'll go to Stephen Gaunt from the Washington Post. Hey, Greg. Um, hey, Stephen. Given given that uh, so many regulars are, are unavailable um, in this window, and obviously the yellow cards added to that, um, I was wondering if you could talk about how you went about building and nurturing depth, um, uh, particularly over the last year with the tournaments, but um, over your, your tenure as well, leading you to this point um, this weekend where you need it. Yeah, so, you know, when we first took over in 2019, um, the important thing for, for us as a program was to acknowledge where we are, right? Like, acknowledge who, who we are as, as the U.S. men's national team. And part of that was including veterans in the process. And, you know, when you look at the first camp in 2019, there were a number of veterans, guys that have been there before, that were in, in the group. And, and then, you know, we... We got the experience, we got the institutional knowledge from, from that group of players and, and slowly started integrating younger players. You know, we had a, the, the majority of our player pool now was too young in 2019, right, to even take part of it. So we had to be patient. So it was that gradual nurture, nurturing of our young players and getting them into the program. I mean, I remember being criticized before for, for you know, inviting guys that didn't deserve caps, so to speak, or they were too young, you know, and, and that was all part of the process of, of getting these guys experience. So that took place over 2019 and the 2019, 2020. Um, you know, again, we used that time to do that. And then 2021 was really being about intentional. You know, we, we knew we could use the Nations League and the Gold Cup to give a large number of players experience in CONCACAF competition. And, and that's why we split the rosters up, and that's why we used a, a huge group of players in that. And then finally, throughout qualifying, you know, I, I think being, being brave enough and believing in young guys enough to give them opportunities to get on the field and see what it's like to qualify. You know, when you think about George Bello or Gianluca Buzio or, or Gio or, you know, whoever it is, you know, we've used a really young player pool in qualifying. 
And that's helped us. I think it's given the players confidence, but it's also given the coaching staff confidence that we can call on a guy like Shaq in the last minute and be completely comfortable with, with how he's going to perform in a game. In this qualifying cycle, 38 players have, you, have earned at least one cap. That's tied for second most in U.S. history. 29 players making the World Cup qualifying debut, tied for first with the 1998 cycle. Next will be Grant Wall. Hey, Greg. Um, I wanted to ask about the approach to the game tomorrow. Obviously, three points is far and away the biggest goal, but it is possible that goal difference could become a very big thing. Um, it, how much are you keeping that in mind, and how would that potentially influence sort of your management of risk in going forward tomorrow? Well, you know, we want to score goals. There's no question about that. But I don't think we're presumptuous enough to think that we're going to win this game in a blowout. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Panama's a good team, well-coached team, physical team, and they're going to put up big resistance. Our goal in the game tomorrow is to win the game. Um, it's a home game. You know, I, I've talked about how we're so excited to play in Orlando in front of the fans. That stadium, in my opinion, is one of the best stadiums in, in America for getting a, a crazy atmosphere. Um, and we want to use that atmosphere, um, but it's still going to be a difficult game, and we need to be—we need to bring the intensity um, if we want to win. Next will be Paul Tenorio from the Athletic. Thanks, Michael. Um, Greg, kind of going off of what your answer was to Steve, you reflected on things going all the way back to January camp in 2019. It's been a three-year journey to get to this point. I wonder, um, kind of, what it feels like for you to be this close to the goal that you first set out back in 2019 to get back to the World Cup and, and how you feel this national team has grown and matured and maybe come together to, to finally be this close to, to qualification. Thank you. You know, uh, Paul, if we end up qualifying, I think that's when I'll do my reflection. Um, you know, now it's time for us just to focus on what's in front of us. And it's a game tomorrow against Panama. Um, you know, that's all that really matters, and, and that's what we're focused on. You know, all the work that we're doing in the office right now is focused on, on how do we beat Panama, getting the group ready to play. Um, we'll have one more training session, and, and then we'll go. But, you know, again, this is about right now staying in the moment, staying in the present, and, um, and fo focusing on the tax, task at hand. And, um, you know, we'll sit down, me and you will sit down in Chicago over a coffee, and we'll review. We'll, I'll reflect for hours. Don't worry. Next will be Jeff Carlisle from ESPN FC. Thanks, Michael. Hello, Greg. Um, hey, Jeff. How much did Panama's recent result against Honduras, how much does that kind of complicate your plans uh, for tomorrow? And defensively, what kind of challenges does Panama pose? Are they super mobile? Or are they super strong? I mean, you know, what do you think their strengths are there? You know, I think they're elite at, at finishing crosses. Um, Finishing off crosses, I think they're very, very good. First of all, they have great service from both the left and right side, and they have really good runs in the penalty box. And it, if you look at the chances they get, it's time and time again, a guy crossing from a deeper position to good runners in the box, athletic forwards, and, and they score a goal. If you remember the goal they scored, us, scored against us when we played in Austria, they took the lead one nothing. It was It's a carbon copy of what I'm talking about. Ball that's on the left side of the field, whipped in the box by Eric Davis, who has a, a great left foot and a tremendous run in the penalty box by their striker and a good goal. So we have to be aware of that, um, acutely aware of that, because that can, that can hurt us. Um, regarding the result, I don't, I don't understand how that, like the complication part of it. Explain that to me, how it would complicate well, things. Well, I mean, might they, be, might they be a little bit more desperate? you know, take a little bit more risk because oh. I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that they thought that they would get three points at home against Honduras yeah. and they did. No, I mean, I think if, if that leads to them getting unbalanced, I think it's, it's, it's good for us. Um, you know, but the way we're looking at this, Jeff, is, is we want to we wanna go out and win the game. And whatever it takes to win, we're going to do it. And actually, my original question, I think I was thinking more about Panama's defense, like where, you know, where are they strong and, and, and you know, what are their assets uh, in that part of the field? They have strong center backs, physical center backs, good outside backs, ability to get forward um, into the attack, as I mentioned before. 
But, you know, we know some of these guys. They played in the league. Escobar played in the league. Cummings played in the league. Andrade plays in the Bundesliga. Quality center backs. Physical team, you know, with, with Godoy. He, he's, a, he's a very strong player um, in, in our league, and we, we know him well. Overall, I like their team. I think they're a good team. Next will be Daniel Nora from Univision. Thank you, Michael. Hi, Greg. I want to take you back to uh, 2017. I'm wondering where were you that night? The team failed in, in Trinidad and Tobago, and how good is to be now with the opportunity on your hands to just take back the team to to a World Cup? Um, I, I was on my in my living room on my couch watching it with um, with a group of people, and um, you know we were disappointed with it, obviously as as many people were, um, but. Again, for us, it's, you know, since we took over, it's about um, positioning the team. We, we talked about what we want to do as a group, what we're trying to do as a group, and, and part of it means qualifying for the World Cup. And, and this is a step that we, that we want to take. So tomorrow is, is an important game to get us in that direction. Um, I'm not sure it's going to fully get us over the line if we win tomorrow, but we're going to be doing our best to, um, to win tomorrow, and then we move on and, and face Costa Rica. Next will be Nancy Armour. Thanks, Michael. Hi, Greg. Um, hey, Nancy. Speaking of that, you should know the Costa Rica result before you guys kick off. How much will you pay attention to that, and, and how would that impact you, or would it impact you if Costa Rica does not either win or get a point? Um. We'll, we'll certainly be paying attention to it because I think it's relevant to our game and, and the implications of our game, but I'm not sure it will change our game plan much. It could potentially change um, you know, Panama's game plan because if Costa Rica wins and they don't win, they'd be eliminated. So um, you know, there's, there's that that we have to take into consideration. I think that's potentially what Jeff was alluding to. But um, you know, we'll see. Again, our, our focus is on our group and how we can how can we be impactful and win the game. Next will be Emily Olson. Thanks, Michael. Greg, uh, you talked about the the strategics and the planning that went into um, creating this this deep pool of players. But I'm curious. Um, you know, you've been a player in the U.S. men's national team pool yourself before. How much of this group and how successful they are in their next men up mentality, in the, the word brotherhood that always comes up, how instrumental has the group of players itself been in keeping the pool connected? And, and how would you describe the balance between what you do and what they've been able to do? It's a great group of guys. Um, you know, I talk about, you know, our, our biggest stars are, are humble, great human beings. And, and that's a good starting point for, for a successful group. Um, you know, they enjoy being around each other. They enjoy their time. When, when a new guy comes in, they make them feel welcome. Um, you know, it's not by accident that guys like Eunice Moose or Sergio Dest want to be playing for our team. It's because of the environment that's created by the players. And I, I said this many times before. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, it's a good group of players. You know, again, you know, my reflection will be done after this qualifying round. My, the focus right now is on is on Panama and and beating Panama. We'll go to Charlie Bone from MLS Soccer. Uh, hi, Greg. Uh, when you announced the roster uh, and you talked about calling in Jordan P. Fock and you said in Orlando we think we're going to need a box presence, uh, someone in there that can finish off crosses. And so that would seem to suggest he's in the mix for tomorrow. But I wonder how Thursday factors into that and the. Uh, the other option you have a very different skill set in Jesus Ferreira, uh, among others, uh, for that number nine job. Yeah, um, all three play, all three forwards are in contention to to start the game tomorrow. Um, they all bring different elements that that could help the team be successful. Jordan certainly is good on crosses, good in the penalty box. Um, you know, it was a difficult night for him in Azteca. There's no question about that. But players bounce back. Um, you know, Pe Pepe, I think. You know, I talked after the game about his work rate. I thought it was outstanding. I thought his defensive pressure was very good. So, you know, overall, these guys all put themselves in contention to play again, and we'll have to, to make the decision tonight. We'll take a couple more for Greg and continue with Ivis Galarsep from SBI Soccer. 
Greg, I want to ask you about that first Panama game. Obviously, it was a long time ago, but still, uh, when you had a chance to sit and really kind of uh, break that game down, what, what do you think? What, what Ultimately, what did you find when you kind of sat down? What went wrong in that game? You guys only had like a point to two um, expected goals. And how much do you think that it helps you to have that game to show your team or to remind your team just what Panama can do and just what they need to do on Sunday? Yeah, there's some good footage. When I, when I look at that game, um, obviously it was – Missed opportunities, that's what I'd say. The final pass wasn't good. Um, the final action was not good. We got into some good positions, but lacked the finishing quality, the finishing touch to, to score goals or to be dangerous enough. Point two two was, you know, was very low in terms of expected goals. And um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't a great day for us. No question about that. So there's certainly things to learn from. And, um, you know, we, we watched the tape a number of times. We watched all their games um, that they've been playing, their most recent game, and, and there, there'll be opportunities for us. Next is Megan Swanick. Hey, Greg. I'm wondering if there's anything you're going to be focusing on in training ahead of tomorrow's match, either with specific individuals or collectively as a team moving forward from the Mexico match that you think need to be improved upon? Just a couple of details that, that we'll look at. You know, I thought, you know, the Mexico game, I thought our defensive intensity, our defensive shape, um, you know, recovering when pressure was broken, you know, pressuring high up the field, you know, it's everything we talked about, I thought was, was pretty much there. Um, I thought we did a good job. There's some details that we, we need to iron out and, and give Tata some, give him credit for making some changes that put us in some awkward positions. No, no question about it. You know, loading the front line, dropping players like Jimenez into the midfield to receive the ball. So th that became an issue for us, and especially when you don't have the legs at altitude to cover the ground that we normally do. It, it was challenging at times, but we looked at that. We, you know, we made some adjustments at halftime. We looked at the video after the game, and, and you know, some things will, will apply to the Panama game. But for us, it's just about focusing on what we do um, fine-tuning some details and, and going. You know, there's not much you can change when the guys are still in regeneration phase. You know, we, we can't have a full session today. It's going to be an extremely light session. Just focus on small things. Last question for Sam Stasco from The Athletic. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Greg. Um, you mentioned the regeneration phase. How have the guys been recovering so far? Is there anything different that you guys did considering the altitude and how taxing it was? On Thursday, and then you mentioned before camp started that you know you you thought it would be possible, or you were considering playing Geo in a central role. Um, do you think that's is that something that's on the table for tomorrow night? Potentially, you know, we talked about it. Um, it could happen. Again, we gotta we gotta look at where he is physically, um, and if he's ready to play or not. That's that's a concern of ours. Um, you know, I thought he had a good impact uh, coming in the game the other night. Uh, so we'll see. But in terms of the group, the, the spirits are high. Um, they, you know, they've been doing regen yesterday. We, we've got some, some stuff over at the hotel that they're doing today in preparation for the training session. Um, so we'll be ready. Thanks. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't ask me about the Tar Heels, Sam. No one asked me about the Tar Heels. <laughs> Bonus question, Sam? Uh, I didn't get to watch that. No? So, yeah. Huh? Please go ahead. Talk about the tour. <laughs> oh, no one likes the Tar Heels now. Come on, guys. This is a run, man. We're making a run. We got to get on board here, right? We take take down Sa here? take down St. Peter's, and then we go from here. Hubert's doing a great job, man. We got to give him the respect. <laughs>